Greetings everybody, this is Thunder, Desert Thunder, Thunder in the Desert. I think I'd do a video today on shamanism because it's much misunderstood. Energy, shamanism, spirits, uh, feelings from that. Shamanism is one of the uh, most ancient uh, practices in the world. And it originated, the word itself originated in Russia, in Siberia, okay, that shaman word, okay, it's often associated with uh, shamans in North and South America because uh, they're medicine people or medicine men. But shamanism is an all-inclusive word, and that word has to do with working with energy. If you really want to boil it down to the basics, it has to do with working with energy. And people that come in contact with shamans are liable to experience that energy and that connection, okay, depending on what was meant to happen in their life or what uh, healing is uh, supposed to come about or take place. It's all about energy and it's all about frequency. I've talked about this before. And so I feel sometimes from comments that I receive that shamanism is much misunderstood, sometimes considered an intrusion, sometimes considered a, uh, oh, I don't know, a, a, a scary thing. It's not. You have to go with the flow of it. And yes, shamans can be uh, intense, okay? Just read some of Castaneda's uh, works, okay, about Don Juan, okay, and that whole concept of shamanism, and you find out that anybody that comes in contact with a shaman is not always happy, okay, <laughs> because they misunderstand, or they have a lot of questions, or they get confused, okay. And that's because when a shaman comes into somebody's life, their life changes and they feel all kinds of different energies and they feel, um, and they have questions. Now, if you really want to boil it right down to what happens uh, or what shamanism is, it is about energy work. And no, it's not about uh, being a Reiki master or any of that bullshit. It's a much higher concept it's a working with spirits okay and spirits uh, can mean any is another misunderstood thing that can mean any kind of th uh, thing to a hundred different people they'll have a hundred different meanings as to what a spirit is um, spirit is energy okay there's the divine energy, there's the uh, supreme energy, whatever you want to call it. There's the energy of the universe, there's the ocean of energy, there's the infinite. Which we are all part of, we are all, all part of, and we are all one. Just like the Lakota Mtakwe Uyasin, which means we are all one. That's what it means. And we are all one. So if we're all one, we're all the same energy, okay? So here we go with energy again. And we're already all connected and we're already in each other's space or energy space. We just don't know it. We're not aware of it. What do shamans do? Will they make you aware of it? They work with that energy. They direct that energy. Because on a lower level, on a lower frequency, when you're way up here on the high frequency, you have this uh, high, high energy, high frequency, we're all connected, that type of thing. But it, when you come into contact with a person, okay, uh, you feel different energies, especially with a shaman. You're going to start feeling that energy that's connecting. If the shaman's connecting with you, through that high energy frequency, 
it's going to filter right down down into your physical being and you're going to get all kinds of feelings you might get scared you might get uh, whatever but all that is is a raising of the consciousness to the point where you're realizing the connection that's already there with all of us okay and all that shaman does is bring you to a state of consciousness to where you're starting to feel that energy and when you do that you start healing or you start uh the, things start there's a cure that takes place a healing that takes place in your life that you need shamans can sometimes see things that you can't see this started with me at a very early age and it starts in many different ways how it can be a lightning strike it can be a revelation it can be a dream it can be an incident it can be a near-death experience whatever it's a mantle that people carry through their life and night they don't always uh, it's not always a mantle that they uh, chose sometimes it's a mantle that they have to carry because that's just the way it is And carrying that mantle is not always easy because people are much misunderstood. And whatever power a shaman has is not their power. It's the power from the supreme master, okay? The supreme uh, source of energy, the highest energy there is, is allowed to flow through them in a manner of... Uh, clarity and uh, you know that person opening up their channel for that energy to flow through them and to other people okay so there is no um, intrusion or anything like that in the sense that we're all connected anyway <clears throat> and it's a realization of that connection that the shaman uh, facilitates So, again, shamans have been around for a long time, and they've been called different things, holy men, medicine men, um, whatever. But you better believe that if one comes into your life, it's a good thing, okay? And you should be open to <clears throat> whatever teachings or energy transference or whatever that that shaman has to offer because a true shaman is coming from a space of love okay coming from a space of love heart space baby and if you're not coming from a place of love then you might totally misunderstand what true love really is and it's a much higher thing um, there's all kinds of degrees of it and this higher love can filter right on down from that high frequency to the lower frequencies of the body and the ego of the other person and their ego and their body <clears throat> will get freaked out or their ego might get freaked out because it challenges uh, life experience It heals life experiences that that person might have had. It, it brings attention to uh, energy blockages in the form of experiences in life, in the form of uh, trauma in life, in the form of uh, hang-ups. I'll just put it, let's just say hang-ups that a person might have. Uh, fears uh, from anything from sexual fears right on up to uh, other phobias okay what a shaman does is he, he comes right in and uh, facilitates the opening it's kind of like a yogi facilitates facilitates the opening of uh, chakras on different energy levels and allows the the flow okay to happen 
Um, how does this happen? Well, it's a miraculous thing. You, I mean, a, a shaman or a, a person that practices energy work on that higher level can come right in and just connect with people through a picture, through a voice, through... Uh, I've talked about this before. Now, you either love this or you don't... I mean, you either love it or you fear it. You either love it or you fear it. And if you fear it, it's because you're ignorant of the facts, okay, of how a shaman works. Shamans are people, too. Let me just throw this in. Shamans are people. They're spirits in the form of people, okay. Uh, we are all spirits in the form of people, except uh, shamans are like, uh, I don't know how to describe this, but they have an edge on that. Uh, as far as the spiritual side goes. And shamans are uh, people that have feelings, okay, just like other people, and emotions. And sometimes they'll come into uh, contact contact with a real negative energy that the, the, they figure that the, you know the shamanistic side wants to balance out right away. And if it doesn't happen, or if the person freaks or whatever, just look at some of the Castaneda books, the, some of his disciples in that book. Totally paranoid, totally confused, totally, uh, but uh, in the end, it all worked out for the best thing. Shamans have love interests, just like other people. Or they, let's put it this way, they're searching for uh, a oneness. Not a relationship, I'm talking about a oneness, okay? And that means... A frequency that there uh, if you're a male shaman you're 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 searching for that frequency from a female that is uh, vibrating on the same level or the same frequency or the same intensity that you're coming from because hey when you find that like in my book emergence when you find that then it's uh, it's like finding gold, okay? It's like finding gold. It's, it's a treasure. Let's put it that way. It's a treasure. And so you seek that as a shaman. You're always looking for that as a shaman. But that's not your main... Uh, you, you know what your purpose is. is a, a, you're a shaman for everybody. And you're always connecting with a, any, everybody. Especially within a circumference of, say, let's say, 100 miles. <laughs> You feel all kinds of energy. You feel everybody's energy. And uh, you, you feel all kinds of problems and situations that are being worked out that nobody else feels. In a way, it's a hair-raising thing being a shaman. It's a tough job, but somebody's got to do it, I guess, you know. And the first and foremost thing that a shaman realizes that is he is everybody. Because what does God realize if there was a, quote, God? And there is a God. It's just not in the, uh, the way people think. It's an energy. It's a high intelligence that feels and knows everything. So if a person, a shaman, has that intelligence incorporated into them that feels and knows everything, as much as it can being embodied in a physical being and within an ego and within uh, uh, that concept. If a, if a shaman uh, thinks like the supreme intelligence, then imagine uh, what it's like. Imagine what it's like. And imagine the misunderstanding that uh, shamans experience. I'm here to defend shamans. I'm here to defend uh, anything that they do because it's a true shaman, again, is coming from a place of love. A true medicine man, a true uh, wisdom seeker, 
a, a true uh, carrier of the mantle of uh, enlightenment knows stuff that other people don't know <clears throat> feels things that other people don't feel so anytime that any kind of comment is made or there's any kind of misunderstanding or anything like that it's uh It's all, it's all uh, perceived by a shaman as ignorance, okay, as ignorance. Ignorance of how things work on that level and being on a lower level of paranoia and uh, fear. Again, if you, if, you, if you come into the presence of a shaman or a shaman wants to work with you, He's working uh, on a high, high level that you can't even comprehend. Most people can't comprehend. They can only feel certain feelings in their body, certain energies, okay, that surround them. And the reason that they're feeling uh, these energies is because there's uh, some type of thing being worked out, a balance being worked out, a purification But sometimes people don't even feel, uh, you know, they don't even feel the energy. If you're a little bit more perceptive, you might feel the energy balancing you out. You might feel the energy coming down, working with all the chakras. From the base chakra, the sex-driven chakra, right on up through all the chakras leading to the crown chakra. And depending on where your issues lie <clears throat> okay depending on where your issues lie whether it's up here or here or in your heart or in your solar plexus because different thoughts and different uh, feelings from experiences in life lodge in certain areas of your body if you have sexual hang-ups, then your base chakra is going to feel it because it's clearing out whatever uh, fear and hang-ups and blocks that you might have there. Or if you have a, a, a heart, uh, you know, you're not being heartfelt enough in life or whatever chakra is involved in the healing, you're going to feel energy there, baby. And so it's nothing to fear, okay? As a matter of fact, the best thing that you can do is go with the flow. Go with the flow of it. Because uh, that flow is unblocking energies, is dispersing, uh, either dispersing or integrating uh, some kind of spirit that you have surrounding you. And that spirit basically is, uh, can be a lot of things. It can be a, a construction of uh, something you constructed in your life from um, living life. Because you were pure at one point, uh, and you might spend your whole life trying to figure that out or trying to overcome it. Shaman can come in, boom, like that, and uh, release that, balance it. It's a yin-yang thing. It's an energy thing, and it's a frequency thing. It's a higher energy and a lower energy. It's a higher energy and a lower energy. Um, and so... I just felt that uh, I wanted to uh, enlighten uh, certain people or the people in general as to what shamanism is. It's a working of uh, it's a working with spirit or spirits. Well, what are spirits? What are spirits? Well, they could be angels. They could be it depends. You know, a, a spirit is an energy, and a spirit is um, 
Well, if you look at if you look at uh, like the practice of Kundalini, uh, you can embody the the, the divine feminine spirit, which is a very uh, healing thing. But it's also a very uh, it's a Kundalini process. It's a it's a raising of the Kundalini and a, a piercing of the chakras. All this stuff is connected. It's so complex. It's it's hard to put into words. You'd have to take five books or six hours of video <clears throat> to describe it or to connect everything. That, but all of this stuff with yogis and shamanism and uh, medicine men, uh, it's about the ordinary individual that rises up to a higher level and becomes super ordinary okay or super uh, conscious or super elevated consciousness it's a rough job okay somebody's got to do it though evidently because people are chosen okay and when they connect with other energies don't think it's easy on the shaman both from an emotional aspect and from a physical aspect all kinds of aspects that's why a shaman constantly sees the need to purify himself and cleanse himself, okay? And that just happens as a matter of course, okay? And the, the shaman will become a warrior sometimes, and the shaman will become uh, anything that the shaman needs to be to get the point across, either a warrior or a... Uh, Let's put it this way, he, you know, he's always a warrior, but sometimes it's a soft edge and sometimes it's a hard edge. Sometimes it's soft and sometimes it's hard. It's the yin and yang. Depending on what the person that he's dealing with or the energy that he's dealing with needs at that time. Um, now let's take this matter of... Uh, a shaman or a person that is into energy uh, that's a male, let's say, let's, let's take this matter up of uh, connecting with a female energy, uh, let's say you know, on all kinds of different levels. It could be a tantric level. Tantric is holy. It's like tantric sex, only if you take sex beyond the physical, then it becomes spiritual and it becomes uh, a type of thing where uh, there's a raising of consciousness it all happens on a very high level okay can you feel that energy in your lower chakra yes can you feel it uh, 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 traversing up and down the spine uh, 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 popping out of your crown chakra your third eye can you feel that stuff? Well, of course you can. Of course you can. And any person that is into higher enlightened practices is going to realize that everything is spiritual from, the, from sex to uh, everything you do. And there's nothing naughty about it. There's nothing bad about it. Is it erotic sometimes? Yes, it's erotic. But what is erotic? Well, it's a flow of energy that uh, uh, gives you sensations on your body, okay? But channeling that flow of energy can be a very beautiful thing and raise your consciousness. And this can all happen uh, in physical proximity or it can handle... Uh, I mean, it can happen through... Uh, physical proximity or can happen through uh, distance or uh, on a spiritual level. People can get opened up, boom, like that. Uh, they can connect like that. They can feel a oneness. Because again, we're all one. Now, can it be an exclusive oneness? Well, that's up to the shaman whether he wants to hook up with somebody. Because, uh, you know, like I've said before, a shaman is looking too for that perfect shamaness, 
okay, to hook up with. How many women uh, fill that bill? Not too many. How many men fill that bill? Not too many. From a, you know, if you're a shamaness and you're looking for a man that uh, embodies or walks that that same road that you do, uh, it might not be that easy, you know. Uh, but then again, there's a whole nother story to that about uh, what spirit wants to do with you and what spirit doesn't want to do with you. If that if that's an impediment or a hindrance, then you might not it might not come into your life. Do I know everything? No. Do shamans know everything? No. Because half the time they're when they channel energy and they're uh, affecting a change in another person, or let's say they're talking to another person, or even talking on a video like I'm talking right now, they're a listener. They're an observer of what's going on with uh, their entity. I'm listening to what's coming through my mouth and I'm learning what's coming through my mouth. I'm teaching myself, or let's put it this way, spirit is teaching me through myself and through what I transmit to others. And so you're, the, the, the transmitter is learning and the receiver is learning. The transmitter is benefiting and the receiver is benefiting. If you can grasp that concept, okay? The transmitter is benefiting if he's uh, vocalizing, and the receiver is benefiting, and likewise on an energy level, that same thing's happening too. We're both, are, uh, uh, there's, a, there's some kind of a healing or a cure or a balancing or dispersion of energy that's uh, for the benefit of that person. It's all whether you're open to it or not. Most people go around in a dumbed down state, in a, uh, uh, a numbed down state, where they don't feel anything, they don't feel any kind of energy. Okay, they're not uh, being in presence, they're not, they don't feel, they don't, they're robots, okay. Or they're hung up in such a rut that they can't get outside their own uh, way of thinking or feeling or fearing and so when energy is just at some point if you're connected with somebody that's on a higher energy level that energy is going to just come right down whether you like it or not because it's not about a personal thing it's about the energy it's like water when you pour water and it seeks out uh, the lowest areas fills them up okay well that's how you look at energy it'll seek out the area that you need in your life to be filled up, balanced, uh, energized, whatever. And you might not like it. But in the long run, you'll love it. Because uh, it's a, a, a healing is being affected on you. <clears throat> So yeah, you know, shamans are, are uh, sometimes feared. When anybody hears that name, shaman, or uh, sometimes they think witch doctor or uh, whatever, well, a true shaman, no. A true shaman walks this earth selfless almost in a way. And uh, with, a, with an eye that sees beyond what other people see and sometimes a shaman uh, the person that that shamanistic energy or that tendency or whatever it is that comes through the person the physical part the normal part gets upset or gets uh, not doesn't get upset I, I would say gets uh, disappointed <laughs> frustrated how about that when somebody else might uh, misconstrue what they do and what their purpose is and uh, how they hook up with people and all that kind of stuff. 
And it's a constant lesson for the shaman too. It's, that's how the shamans get healed, that's how they learn, and that's how they learn how to do their craft better. Because they care and they give a shit about other people and they also give a shit about uh, themselves, okay? Now, do they care what other people think about them, uh, really, when it boils down? No. If people misunderstand them and um, uh, it doesn't, they don't become a, a prisoner to that misunderstanding, but they do... Uh, they do feel like um, they want their words and their energy and their healing to get through to that other person. Because, hey, that person could end up being a best friend or a uh, even closer. Depending on one, whether that person wants to raise their frequency and... Uh, their consciousness to a point where they get by fear. So, if a shaman comes into your life, like I said, look at it as a blessing, not as a curse. Look at it as something good, not something bad. Look at it as something you want to embrace. A spiritual teacher is what a shaman is of the highest order. Just like a yogi, just like a revered medicine man who people go and bring offerings to for healings. Just because it comes through a video or just because doesn't mean it's any less. In fact, uh, that uh, that. Uh, avenue of deliverance, uh, that avenue of uh, being able to see a shaman or uh, see what a shaman has to say is a supreme blessing because you know what? Shamans don't even like to use videos from uh, personally speaking, okay, I do videos but I'd rather be one-on-one. -on -one. I'd rather be in the person's presence. I'd rather have that person uh, be in my presence. Sometimes the medium gets in the way, but also the medium can be a good way to deliver to a large number of people or an easy way. And when I think about it, I often think about how uh, much I would have liked to... Uh, seen some of the people that I revere uh, at least in person or if not in person uh, like this through a video where I can see their energy feel their energy see their characteristics uh, see their or energy pattern because that's all thunder is is an energy pattern I am an energy pattern being manifest as a physical being so anyway uh, I don't know I get kind of uh, passionate sometimes about uh, conveying the message um, and I felt that this is something that's needed I always felt I always feel that it is needed to understand people that walk the path that I walk and that's why I did a, uh, this uh, video on shamanism. And I hope that uh, somewhere along the line it affects a healing or an openness towards this type of, uh, I won't call it a profession. It's not like priests in the priesthood or, uh, uh, you know, going down and, uh, no, it's not a profession. It's a calling. It's a calling and... Uh, with that calling comes a lot of emotion and all kinds of things that people don't even realize but should have ultimate respect for and reverence for and not just take it for granted 
or think thoughts that are, are not appropriate to the, them hooking up with that energy and experiencing all the delights and all the joys and all the benefits of what will uh, be a transformation there in their life in the long run. Anyway, I'm going to leave it at that today. Uh, hope I get through to whoever I need to get through to and uh, hope that there's some uh, good information in here that will uh, cause you to be more open to uh, this type of thing. Anyway, this is Thunder. I'm out of here. Adios.